Hello, I'm Electro Llama. I'm one of the speedrunners of X01, and this is a tutorial and uh, somewhat beginners on how to get a good time in X01 speedruns. So this is geared towards people who maybe play the game two or three times, and they have a time somewhere in the low one hour range. Um, but with this guide, you should be able to get under 40 minutes, uh, which would be around the top half of the speedrun leaderboard, which I'll link to you in the description. In X01, you can switch between ball and disc modes. You might think that you'd switch between the two a lot, but the speedrun actually uses disc about 90% of the time because it helps you maintain your speed. There's a simple technique that we use where we hit the ground, double jump, and use gravity to hit the ground again, and you repeat that in a regular pattern. The one time we do use ball is hitting the downward slopes. So you aim for the top of the hill, dive in disc mode, and use ball right before hitting it. This allows you to pick up a lot of speed. If you're already gliding quickly, like if you're supersonic, or if there's smoke coming from the disc, you might not want to use the balancing method. Instead, you can glide fairly close to the ground, and you'll notice a slight updraft. This is called a ground effect. You can use gravity in a regular pattern to maintain your speed. On second, you start out rolling down the hill, and then glide while skipping every other hill. When you get to the big hill, use the dive method to get a sonic boom. Hold it until the sonic boom expires. Then you do a shallow dive into the clouds and glide to the power-up. In this game, each power-up gives you a 30 second time bonus in your in-game time. So many of the power-ups are worth getting, but some of them are too far out of the way to be worth the time save. Find the crater and dive down and then back up. If you aim for the light beam, but turn a little bit left, you'll see a nice big hill. So you can ramp up at the beginning of it, glide while looking down, and aim to dive down on the back side of it. This gives you a nice sonic boom. From there, simply fly in a straight line to the exit. Try to only hit the backs of the hills to maintain your speed. In Noe, start out in glide mode and roll down the hill for a little extra speed. Glide through each of the gates, which give you a nice little boost. Since the disc is smoky, you can use ground effect to maintain your speed. Try not to hit the ground, and you can pay attention to how much smoke is around the disc. Let the winds take you up to the power up. Glide to the power-up and dive into the clouds, which should give you a nice sonic boom. Tap the ground, and this should let you keep your sonic boom up to the top of the canyon. Let the winds take you to the second half of the level. In the hilly section, you can fly through the gates, but they're kind of hard to hit. You can also use the dive method to get some good sonic booms. At the bottom of the hill, you can even stay in ball mode to roll back up the other side. This gives you a good amount of height, which you can use for another boom. The next level is Quirinus, the volcano level. Glide up to the left of the valley, into the clouds. There's this really nice ridge that you can dive down for some really good speed. Glide back down into the valley, and use ground effect. This is probably the best level to practice ground effect because the air is fairly thin and there are some good opportunities to get a sonic boom. Find this nice hill before the booster and roll up through the booster. This gives you enough height to hit this power up up here. Purposely slow down by pressing back and take your time to grab the power up. Remember, it gives you a 30 second time bonus, so it's worth taking your time to get it. Dive back down and try to use ground effect. You should fly past the C-shaped structure, 
I named slightly left to get the first big lava geyser. Use the geyser to get height and dive for a good sonic boom to the end. Use the geyser on the volcano to take you up to the goal, and you can finish the level. Nautica has a lot of randomness, but you can use the bounce effect just like before, and simply fly in a straight line to the goal. There are some more advanced strategies, but they actually don't save as much time as you would think. Going underwater loses you speed, so try to stay above water. You'll find this booster, which takes you to the power-up. One nice thing at the end of Nautica 1 is it shows your in-game time split in the bottom left corner at the end of the level. Here I get around 13 minutes, so anything under 15 minutes is probably good enough. In Nautica 2, we get the orbs in a specific order to save time. You can use the bounce method to get the first optional white orb. You want to use a spire to ramp up to the power-up. Hit the spire and spam jump to get enough height. You can get a nice sonic boom. And aim for the farthest blue orb. Glide through the winds for speed. Back down for a small sonic boom. And aim for the booster on the left. This takes you to the upper blue orb. Get a little height and then dive into this nice half pipe. Then hug the left wall and you'll find the last power up. And just use the bounce method to the exit. Darum is normally a really long level, but it's also the one that we skip in the speedrun. Find this hill with the tree on top, roll down the back of it for some good speed. At the end of the water, hit the bump to get height, and glide up to the ledge. Here you can go out of bounds and under the map. Make a U-turn, and look up to try to find the large valley. It turns out this is the valley that you take right before the end goal. You'll get an updraft which will pull you up to the level, and simply complete it as normal with a nice extra sonic boom. This shortcut is a little tricky, but it'll save you between 3 and 5 minutes. On Coronides you start on this peanut shaped asteroid. You can get some good speed rolling into the valley, and also flying through the asteroid belt. Orbit the planet until you find the direction you want to go in. The double jump gives you a nice little boost to leave the gravity well. Then you want to fly by each of the asteroids, only using gravity as you're approaching them, and try not to hit any of them. You can simply glide past each one to the end goal. On Sojournus, you might know that if you have enough height, you get a lightning strike which gives you the ability to glide. At the start of the level, use jump jump gravity to move in the forward direction. Here there's a nice area to get height. In this video, I don't hit it because I don't spam jump fast enough. So you'll see me rolling around and floating in the wind to try to aim for some more valleys like this. Once you get it, there's a secret where if you have lightning and dive into the water, it gives you an upwards boost. Get height and dive into the clouds for a nice long sonic boom. There are some hills and then some more water which you can use for another boost. But be careful because this is the last water opportunity in the level. You can fly through the clouds in a snake-like manner to keep your boom. If you end up too low, you can just use the bounce method and make sure you keep your lightning. The next level is Darwin. Use the balancing method to get to the first booster. Use the booster to get height up into the clouds, and then dive down for a sonic boom. The second booster can be tricky to hit, so I skip it here, but you want to go through this hole in the rock for some really good wind. This will usually give you a sonic boom. There's a skimming method that I won't go into in this video. 
But you can use a balancing method to get to the orb. And then keep using it to get to the sky cubes. You'll see these two hills, which you can use for height. You want to go up to these winds that carry you up really high. You could take this booster, but I prefer just to dive into the clouds. Basically, you dive downwards until you see the smoke from the clouds, and you let the clouds take you back up. Don't worry about hitting all the boosters, especially that third one, which is a bit to the left. On Obias, you can start out rolling down the hill and spam jump to climb out of the crater. It gets windy every few seconds, and my tip is just to stay low when it's windy. When you get to the water section, it's faster to bounce on land whenever you can. When you're learning the speedrun, this level relies a lot on improv and getting good at the dive method. You'll see me mess up a few times here. You want to find steep and smooth slopes that send you in the direction you want to go. Keep your eye on the orb, because this one's definitely worth getting. And there's a very strong booster after the orb. Use the booster to get height and dive into the valley. This last part with the winds is pretty annoying, but you just have to keep going forward. As you get closer to the monolith, there's a certain point where the ball will slow down quite a lot. Here you can actually finish the level slightly early by purposely stopping and holding backwards. Now you're to the last level, Coelus. There's a skip that a lot of runners do, but I won't go into that in this run. My general tip here is to climb upwards through the clouds and down through the gaps in the clouds. You can sometimes get a sonic boom, but it's pretty difficult on this level because the speed that you need for it is much higher. It's good to learn where all of the purple fireworks are. The first one is this high up one, but it's kind of hard to get to. Luckily there's one just below it, in the clouds. Hold the jump button to get into full charge and release it going straight forwards. This will send you up in the air and you should be able to see the next one. I wouldn't recommend going for this orb, but you can get there by using the purple firework power-up upwards. Time stops when you hit the beam and activates the cutscene. Then we'll show your final in-game time in the bottom left corner. Here you see I get 33 minutes, which is actually in the top 10. And I did this without using any complicated sonic boom strategies. If you're a beginner following this tutorial, and you get used to the strategies I mentioned, I imagine you can get under 40 minutes, which is in the top 20 at the time of this video. Let me know in the comments if there are any parts of this that you have trouble with. Otherwise, I hope you found this useful, and good luck with the speedruns. This has been Electrolama. Thanks for watching.